Okie dokie. This is video number seven of our Move Language for Smart Contract tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to take a look at Artmatic and Equality Operators. Artmatic Operators, Sum, Subtract, Multiply, Divide, and Module Operator. And Equality, we have Higher, Lower, Equal. Let's not waste any more time and let's get straight to it. Let's move. Okay, let's start working with Artmatic Operators. Well, first, what I'm going to do, I am going to create a brand new move file so that we can focus our attention on those Artmatic Operators. And we'll do the Equality Operators right after. Okay, let's go. So I'm gonna create a new file. This new file is gonna be called sample five move. Okay, let's start. Module net to def ADDR sample five. Let's give it a twist. We can either build the functions individually or what we can do is we can take advantage of if and else. And what we do, we pass an ID. We'll tell the function, hey, I want to add, I want to subtract, multiply, divide, and, and calculate module. If we declare those IDs beforehand in the global scope, then we can pass those as we do our tests. Check this out. Let's start with sum. So I'm going to say constant sum. We are just going to pass a value. It's going to be an integer when we do the test and the function will know what kind of operations do we want to do. Compress all the operations into one single function. Okay. So we are going to say u64, right? And this will be zero. And then we'll do the next one. It's going to be, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take the advantage of doing copy and paste. Okay. Uh, there's five. Yes, those are five operators. So this will be sum, sub as in subtract, or I can say add. I think the right term is add. So I'm going to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and mod as in module operator. Don't worry. You'll know what this is. Okay. Now we are just defining this to be one, two, three, and four. Awesome. Let's build that function called arithmetic operations. Okay. What we want to do is we want to pass two values. We want to pass the value A and value B or the first value and the second value. And then finally we'll pass a third value, which will also be an integer, but will allow us to pass the type of operations that we want to execute because we're going to be nesting all the operations in this particular function. Obviously we want to do a return because we want to know what the value is after we execute that operation. So with that said, value A is going to be U64 then value B for, and then I'm going to call this operator. And this will also be U64, right? Because we're just passing this ID, okay? Awesome, and it's gonna return U64, beautiful. Now let's do the following. If, let's do the first one. If operator is equal to add, then we will add. So all I'm going to do is going to be return. Return, what are we returning? A plus B, beautiful. Let's continue. Else, if operator is equal to sub, we are just subtracting. You see what I'm doing? A minus B, okay? As a matter of fact, I can take an opportunity of just copy and pasting this, and we'll just continue down. Else, if operator is equals to MUL, then this will be multiply, and then we'll do else if operator is equal to divide, this will be truncated division, so I'm going to just explain what this is. Else, at the end, if I don't pass any of the values, I pass anything else, it's just gonna default to mod, okay? So we are going to say else, and return, and we are going to define that mod this B, okay? I'm going to explain what this is, don't worry. Done, that's our function. We can either add, subtract, multiply, divide, or pass and, and obtain the module operator. All right, now let's build a test, okay? So we're gonna do test, and this test is going to print the output. So, which means that I also have to import that from the standard library. I gotta do a test only. We are going to be importing that print. So I'm gonna say use std debug print, beautiful. And now let's just build that function. Test arithmetic. And we are just going to say inside here, let result, because we wanna obtain the result and print it out. And we are just passing our, our function name, which is arithmetic, you can see it here arithmetic operations, boom. And now I just need to pass the values, okay? The arguments, all right? So the first value, let's say I want to add 10 and five, and we wanna make sure that we wanna add. So all I have to do, remember, this is in the global scope of the contract add, so I'm passing add right here, and that should tell that I want to add those two values. That's it, and it's going to return me that. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to now print, and we are printing the pointer of result. And boom, that, that should be it, okay? So let me save that and let's uh, print it. I'm gonna say here, aptos move test. 
Unexpected print. Oh, okay. I think I might know why this is closed. There you go. That was the problem. All right. That should be good. So let me go back. Boom. There you go. So we got 15. We added 15. Awesome. Now let's change this operator to do subtract. So I'm going to say sub. If we sub, we're just going to land then on this one. Okay. Let's go back. Test. And we should have five. There you go. Five. 10 minus five. Five. Awesome. Sub. And let's do multiply. So we're going to multiply. We should obtain 50. Let's go back. 50. Beautiful. Let's go back. Now let's do division. So I'm going to say divide. So I'm going to say clear. Boom. Beautiful. It gave us two. Now let's do module. Let me do it and then I'll explain why we got that result. Let's move, do mod, right? And let's see what we get. Okay, we obtain zero. Why is that? Basically, the module operator, it's going to obtain what is left when we do a division truncate this way, we are truncating the result, we are not going to obtain the full integer with decimals. If we do a truncated division in module, we are going to obtain what is left when we divide it, let me do it manually, we did that 10 five and that gave us two, we divided 10 by five, let's um, do a comment here. When we divide it 10, 5, that gives us 2, right? If that value, if I multiply 5 times 2, what do I get? 5 times 2, I get 10. Now, if I subtract 10 against 10, well, I give us zero. That's why we got zero. Now let's change the value to something else. If the integer is not divisible, we should obtain some remnant value. Okay. For example, if I divide this by 14, then I should be able to obtain some residual value. That being said, I am going to give it a shot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this here. Let's change this to be 14. With 14, we should obtain some residual value. So I'm going Going to go back and test we got four let's find out if our math is correct so what i want to do now i'm going to say 14 divided by five we need to know what is the exact value of that division so if we go with a standard calculator we do 14 divided by five we will obtain 2.8 because we're doing truncated division that means that this is removed and we can confirm this by doing it with the programmer calculator right so if i do 14 divided by five we get two because we have truncated anything that is after that decimal place i will have to now do the following so we know 14 divided it by five truncated it's two now let's do the following five times two remember we grab this and this multiply it give us 10 now we subtract 14 which was our initial value minus what is this four okay that's why we end with four got it awesome we are done with arithmetic operations now let's do the equality and we are done for that i am going to just head over here down and let's work with the equality right below here and we are doing a similar fashion as we did with the arithmetic so it looks clean it looks very clean so i'm gonna say copy and then i'm gonna go back down and by the way there's ways to do this even more clean but i don't want to get you into a complex language yet we are taking baby steps we'll get there we'll definitely get there okay all right so what i'm gonna do now now I'm going to take advantage of what I define in the global scope. Now I want to define the operators for equality. We got higher, right? Lower, higher equals and lower equal. Okay. This can go away. Now let's use that to build our function. Okay. So what we can do also is we can do the following here. We are going to copy and paste instead of arithmetic. We're going to call this equality operator and we are still defining the operator and we will obtain. This is a big difference. When we work with equality operators, we will Will obtain a boolean result so when we define this and we obtain the output we're not going to obtain a numeric value we will obtain a boolean if it's true or false and this will determine the first value which is a is going to be the one that we are going to be comparing against b let's do it so let's define if operator is higher that means that i passed higher in this case i'm going to say if a is higher than b then i want you to return this if it's true or false what this is going to result is in a boolean return
return if it's true or false. Okay, so it's going to use this and it's going to determine if it's true that A is higher than B. Else, if it's lower, then I want you to solve this, right? This will be the lower operator. Else, if it's not lower, then the next value that I'm going to provide is going to be higher equals. So if I select the higher equal, that means I you want to confirm if this value is higher or equals to value V. So this will be this with the equals symbol. Okay. So it's going to determine if it is, then it's going to return true else it's going to return false. Okay. And at the end, we only have one more left. I don't need to define another else. If I can just pass it here natively, which will be lower equals. Okay. So I'm just going to say this and we'll say lower equals and that's it. So we have higher equality operations. We have higher, lower, higher, equal, lower equals. You can see higher, lower, higher, equal, and lower equals. Awesome. Let's build that test function. Take the opportunity of grabbing this right here. Copy and paste down here. And now we'll say test equality. And we are now again passing equality operations. Let me close, remove this. Okay. And now I have to pass higher. We want to find out if 14 is higher than five. Okay. We'll save it and we'll give it a shot. We should receive it true. Let's go back. Let's see. And by the way, oops, I did not change this. I have to make sure that it's returning Boolean. It's not returning Boolean. So let me fix that. There we go. The problem was right here and it's going to be bull. Okay. Because it's going to return a Boolean. Okay. So I'm going to control S. I'm going to clear and test. Let's see now. Beautiful. And we got true. Awesome. It is working as expected. Now let's uh, give it a shot. Let's change this. Instead of higher, we want to find if it's lower. It's going to give us false. Test gave us false. Okay. Now, if we do higher equal, that means that this will be true, but we can also say 14 as well. And that should also be true. Let's try it first here. We should obtain true and we got true. Now let's try it lower equals. This is going to be false false and one more try we're changing this to be five and five should be true because it's lower or equals okay boom and it's true now time for a quiz what type of return are we expecting from the equality operator when we define a function that will do an equality operation what type of return are we going to expect is it a boolean is it b integer is it c string or is it d none of the above well if you answer a you are correct all right this is the end of video number seven on video number eight we are going to take a look at bitwise and bit shift operators see you on video number eight